If you're like me, who just wants to know the key points when reading a news article or a blog post, then you will appreciate the agent we are going to build in today's tutorial. In this Pydantic AI tutorial, we're going to build a blog summary agent that extracts and summarizes the most important information from any web page using Pydantic AI and Pydantic Graph in Python. The tutorial is aimed at a intermediate to advanced developers. Giving the graph data structure is a quite advanced topic. And Pydantic Graph requires a sense IO to run the workflow. However, once you grasp how to use Pydantic AI's graph structure, it can significantly improve your agent workflow. If you have never heard of Pydantic AI before, Pydantic AI is an open source AI agent framework that focuses on simplifying the development of production grade generative AI applications using Python. Pydantic Graph, on the other hand, is another Python library created by Pydantic, but specifically for building and running workflows using nodes and edges, which I will cover in detail later in the tutorial. Now, in terms of the workflow, User will start by entering the URL of a web page. Then we have the get page content node that will download the page content. And an agent will clean out the content and pass only the relevant text to the summarized page node for the summarization. A two steps workflow, pretty straightforward. To get started, launch a terminal and run the command to install Pydantic AI, Pydantic Graph. HTTPX, Beautiful Soup, Nest Async IO, and Rich Python Libraries. Now launch your code editor. Create a Python file and let's name it workflow page summarizer.py. In the script, start by importing the required Python dependencies. By design, async IO does not allow its event loop to be nested. So when in a situation where the event loop is already running, it's impossible to run tasks and wait for the result. The nest async IO library here patches the issue to allow nested event loop running simultaneously. If you are not familiar with some of the third-party libraries we are using, the rich package enhances terminal experience by adding color, formatting, and style to console output. HTTPX and Beautiful Soup are used to make request calls and parse web contents. Set up the console and logging to display output and track progress. Then apply the nest async IO to support nested event loops in async operations. To input the URL, and return the output in a consistent format. Create a base model class called input depth for the input dependency injection. Then create page content and blog summary base model classes to define the output format from agent response. Since models have a fixed context length, we want to ensure that when an agent summarizes a web page, it will only use the content that is relevant and necessary to keep the output accurate. Meanwhile, also keep the cost down by reducing the input token. One workaround is to have an agent review the raw content and filter out the unnecessary text first. And that's what the page content class is for. The blog summary class will be the final output structure determining what data point will be returned. Depending on your use case, you can add more fields to return other relevant information like entities detected blog post date, etc. To download a web page's content, create a function called download page content with URL as parameter. Inside the function, we will use HTTPX to make a get request code to the UR. Then use beautiful soup to delete empty lines and tabs to remove unwanted characters. And this is the only helper function we will need in this workflow. With the helper function and data classes prepared, we are ready to create the AI agents to run the workflow. Create two agents. The web page crawl agent will be responsible for cleaning up the raw content. 
Given the task is relatively easy, here we can use GPT-40 mini model to lower the cost. Max token and temperature control the maximum output length and randomness of the response. GPT-40 mini has a max of 16,400 token limit in case if a page has a long amount of text. The summary agent on the other hand will be responsible for taking the content from the get page content node and produce the output based on the blog summary schema. For the summarization task, I will use the GPT-4 model to be able to generate a concise and detailed output. And I will set the temperature to 0.5 to balance the summary style. In the system prompt, I will specify you are a blog summarizer designed to provide concise and informative summaries of blog content and add the instruction in detail what the output format looks like. Now that we have set up every scene, let's implement the agent workflow. Define the get page content node class as the starting point in the workflow. For the node, it will take an input depth object as argument. When using a base node, we need to implement the async run method to execute the business logic. In the run method, for the download page content function with URL from the graph run context object as argument. Once the page content is downloaded, insert the content to the prompt showing here as the content context. And for the request, we will say, based on the page content above, return only the original text that associated with title and core content. In the last step, insert a log and pass the prompt to the web crawl agent to clean up the text. Once the web crawl agent returns the output that contains only the core content, pass it onto the summarized content node, which we will create next. Create the summarized content node. In the node, Define the page content attribute that references the page content object from the get page content node. In the run method, check if the core content is empty. If yes, return an end object with a message, no content to summarize to end the workflow. Otherwise, insert a log. Use the summarizer agent to summarize the core content and return the blog summary object as the workflow's final output. To manage the workflow, create a graph object and insert the node in the order to be processed. To trigger the workflow, create the main function and kick it off with the graph run function and set the get page content node as the starting point along with the input dependency. We will set the input data object in the main routine. Once the workflow is complete, return the final result with the output attribute. To use the workflow in the main routine, let's create a URL variable to store the target page link, then create the input using the input depth data class and run the main function to generate the summary. Now let's test the workflow with this blog from tech startups. So first, we are getting the raw text. And here's the clean text after stripping out contents that are not relevant. And here's the summary from the workflow. If we look at the summary, three bullet points are created for the key points of the article. Let's try another article, this time from Wall Street Journal. I believe Wall Street Journal has an anti-bot detection on the website. Pretty sure I might get blocked. Okay, so here we are getting the 401 forbidden error back. And I just realized I totally forgot to add the error handler to handle the exception like this. I'll fix it once I release the source code. But yeah. This is everything I'm going to cover in this blog summarizer agent Pydentic AI tutorial. Hope you find the video useful. If there are any tutorial ideas you have in mind and you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. 
Also, if you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.